Disclaimer. We tried our best with the pronunciations. Please bear with us. Happy Twintober, everyone. We all get nervous about the things that go bump in the night. And for 14 years, Northern China's bump in the night was their very own Jack the Ripper, Gao Qingyong, who gruesomely murdered 10 women and an 8-year-old girl. Born on November 10, 1964 in Qingchang, Gao Qingyong was the youngest of eight and was known to be a quiet and introverted child. He was so unassuming that his neighbors barely remembered anything about him. His family saw him as an obedient son that took care of his dying father. Though he graduated high school, he repeatedly failed to get into any university, his only way to upward mobility. In China, the practice of hakao, or household registration, restricted people from moving too far from their hometown. By the time he married his wife Zhang in 1984, hakao had been relaxed. He and his wife decided to move to Baiyan in the Gansu province in 1986 after his father died. In a new city where no one knew him, Gao Qingyong proved to be a ticking, murderous time bomb. Gao Qingyong's reign of terror started off as a robbery. On May 26, 1988, the 23-year-old was riding his bike through the city looking for a house to rob. It didn't take long for him to find his target. He heard music blaring in the darkness and rolled his bike in that direction to break into that house. Once inside, he found his first victim, 23-year-old Bai, no first name given. Deep asleep while the music played, known as Little White Shoes to her friends and family, she worked at a nearby zinc factory and was known to be a beautiful and kind woman who was loved by everyone that knew her. As he rummaged through her room, Bai woke up and Gao struggled to silence her in the most brutal way possible. He had strangled her to the point of breaking her neck, then proceeded to stab her 26 times and slashed her throat. And while Gao did not sexually assault her, it was clear that he considered it when investigators found bloody handprints staining the inside of the victim's thighs. After the vicious murder, he sat on her bed, flipping through a photo album, staring at Bai's photos, for hours before he burnt them. Gao didn't intend to stay there all night to admire his handiwork. He had to go back home to his pregnant wife, who was due to give birth to their firstborn son at any time. His urge to kill had only been temporarily satiated. Six years later, he felt that urge again. On July 27, 1994, he murdered 19-year-old Shi Mao in her factory dormitory. The pair both worked at Baiyan City Power Supply. He was moving from one floor to another when he saw Shi Mao in the cafeteria mopping. She had gone outside to pour out dirty mop water, and when she returned, she saw footprints on the floor and allegedly asked Gao if he had stolen anything. Gao was angered at her accusation and decided to kill her. The next morning, Shi's body was found, her throat was slashed, and she had been stabbed 36 times. He murdered his third victim on March 28, 1997 in Batao, Inner Mongolia, but the details of that murder was never revealed. It had been 10 years between his first and fourth murder, and the gap between murders were getting shorter. In 1998, Gao Qingyong began to escalate in both frequency and viciousness, murdering four people that year. On January 13, 1998, he murdered his fourth victim, Yang, in her Baiyan city home. He savagely sexually assaulted her, stabbed her 16 times, then proceeded to cut off her ears as well as removed a 5 by 9 inch portion of flesh from the top of her head. The brutality of Yang's murder struck fear in the residents of Bai Yan City who worried that they or their loved ones could be next. From this murder, Gao established a method for his killings. All of his victims suffered from sexual assault multiple stab wounds, and the removal of body parts. He killed his fifth victim just three days later inside of her home. She was found stabbed eight times and was missing part of her left breast and an 11 by 9 portion of flesh. Not even the young were spared from his attacks. On July 30th, 1998, he killed his youngest victim, who was only eight years old. She was the daughter of co-worker Mao Mao Zhang at Bai Yan Power Supply. He saw Zhang's daughter at the factory dormitory. While we don't know exactly what happened, it is possible that given the poverty of the area, the eight-year-old was left home alone while her mother went to work. Zhang's daughter had been found later that day in the closet. She had been strangled, 
the belt used to kill her still tied tightly around her neck, and she had been sexually assaulted. There was evidence that he made himself a cup of tea after he was done. The murders in Bayan City were like a terrifying urban legend. Parents told their children to come home before night. Women and girls were afraid to leave their homes without a male relative. There were rumors that the killer preferred beautiful, long-haired women wearing red. It was later revealed that those rumors were partially true. Four months after the little girl's murder, factory worker Su Wei Mao Mao was found in a pool of blood in her home by her mother. Su Wei caught Gao's eyes as she walked home late that night from her late shift from a floor ride salt factory. As soon as she went inside her house, he forced himself in and attacked. Her body was found a few days later. He slashed her throat and stabbed her 22 times. Her breasts, hands, and genitals were all missing. In a later interview, Gao said that the murder of Su Wei Mao Mao took all of five minutes. The police were stumped. No one in her neighborhood heard or saw anything. The removal of body parts were so skilled that the police thought that a butcher or a surgeon might be the culprit. They were dealing with their own Jack the Ripper. Gao had another two-year pause before he resumed killing three more women between the years 2000 and 2002. There was only one confirmed person that was able to escape Gao. During the 2001 Chinese New Year, Miss Xu in Bayan City was walking home late at night. What she didn't realize was that a predator noticed her and began to follow. As she stepped to her door, he grabbed her. Shu fiercely fought back, and she was able to get into her home and lock the door. Shu's husband heard her cries for help, and he ran to her aid. The presence of Shu's husband didn't scare Gao away. He stood outside staring into her window and smiling. By the time the police arrived, he was gone. After 2002, Gao Qingyong simply stopped. For 14 years, he lived quietly and ran a store with his wife. All of his neighbors thought he was a quiet and polite shopkeep unaware of the monster he truly was. No one knows why he stopped, and Gao never gave a reason. So we can only speculate that it was because he was getting older and unable to overpower young women or familial responsibilities finally took priority. While Gao left plenty of evidence at the crime scenes, including fingerprints, footprints, and bodily fluids, much of it was destroyed or discarded by rookie cops during the first set of murders. Many of the victims' families and those who had knowledge of the case believed that the police were negligent while investigating. Leo Shumen, a former colleague of the first victim Bai, said that the police brought in detection dogs from Langchou City, which is over 100 miles away, overnight to investigate. Leo said that the dogs didn't do much and they seemed to be overwhelmed and dizzy due to their overnight trip. One of the major things that Gansu police were criticized for was not releasing the many witness sketches of Gao Qingyong because they did not want to cause a panic. Su Wei Chi Yongping, brother of Su Wei Mao Mao, said that his family wrote to officials in Beijing asking for help solving his sister's murder, but they never received a reply. He also said he visited the police regularly to get updates, but he wasn't given any information. In 2015, the Gansu police decided to restart the investigation. They tested DNA, reviewed over 200,000 sets of fingerprints by magnifying glass, and discovered that nine of their cold case murders were connected. Despite this, they still didn't have a culprit. That was until they got a hit on a DNA sample. In 2016, Gao's uncle was arrested for bribery and a DNA sample was taken. At the time, China had just started taking DNA samples of all men and boys. The authorities said that DNA collection was necessary to combat the increase in violent crimes, particularly serial killings. Even the most minor crimes resulted in having a DNA sample taken. After reviewing family history, they were able to narrow down the suspects to Gao. They watched him for months before they were sure that Gao was the culprit. On August 26, 2016, Gao was arrested at his store inside of Baiyan City Industrial School, much to the surprise of his wife who watched her husband be taken away by a group of policemen. She had no idea that she was married to a serial killer. During the interrogation, Gao admitted to 11 murders. Detective Wang Yang described Gao as being so calm that it was terrifying. The detective said that Gao described the murders in great detail with a blank expression. Even when describing the most vicious details, he remained unemotional. He told the police that he threw away the body parts off a bridge and into the Yellow River on his way home. When asked why he killed, he answered that he felt anxious and flustered and the only way to relieve that was to kill. 
Gao said that he randomly picked the women that he followed. He would rape the ones he thought beautiful and only kill the women he didn't. He said that the removal of organs was revenge for his victims resisting him. It took a year for Gao Qingyong to go to trial. He was charged with murder, rape, robbery, and mutilation of a corpse. Because of the high profile status of the case, prosecutors wanted to make certain that they didn't have any false positives. The trial lasted two days. He bowed three times in the traditional way to apologize to the families and bizarrely said that he would donate his organs. On March 30th, 2018, he was found guilty and said that he would not appeal the judge's decision. On January 3rd, 2019, with the approval of the Supreme People's Court, Gao Qingyong was executed in Baiyan City, Gansu Province at the age of 54.